A new era in the Witchblade mythology begins when Detective Sarah Pazzini's mission to expose corrupt cops is interrupted by an ancient artifact. We're going to talk about it in our review of Witchblade number one from Image Comics. See you in three. Marguerite Bennett takes on the Herculean task of reimagining Witchblade for a new generation. It's filled with gritty crime action, supernatural surprises, and a bushel full of teases for what's to come. This just may be the Witchblade comic you're looking for. That said, Long-time Witchblade fans may be left a little confused. Witchblade number one begins with an excavation dig in the heart of Berlin led by Kenneth Irons. The ruthless executive is on the hunt for something incredibly rare and his workers believe they found it. Irons' men order a female worker to unearth the artifact by hand. When the gleaming jewel of the heart of the spidery item comes to light, it suddenly leaps onto the worker, takes over her mind, and compels her to run. Right off, Bennett gives readers a crash course on the discovery of the Witchblade, who wants it, and the dangers of denying Irons what he wants. The opening pages are a brutally efficient demonstration of how to establish the premise and the antagonist with maximum impact. The possessed woman runs into the busy Berlin streets and carjacks a vehicle to get to the airport. It's obvious the Witchblade is locked onto its intended host and intends to get to her by any means necessary. Airport security opens fire on the construction worker when she charges the terminal gates, but a hapless airport staffer becomes the Witchblade's new host when she kneels down to check the construction worker for signs of life. What follows is a series of hot potato scenes depicting the Witchblade hopping from one woman to the next until it commandeers someone who is ready to board a plane headed for New York. Again, Bennett is showing expert efficiency in quickly showing how the Witchblade jumps from one host to the next and has a clear and urgent purpose to find its host. The pacing is high, but the scenes communicate everything you need to know without taking any shortcuts. The comic cuts to a montage introduction to Detective Sarah Pazzini. She spent her entire adult life serving in one form of law enforcement or another, driven to live up to her father's memory and eventually avenge her father's death at the hands of corrupt cops. On this night, Pazzini meets with a human trafficking broker to join his organization both to smash the ring from within and find out who else on the police force is involved. And there's that word again, efficiency. Bennett wastes no time giving readers the fewest amount of words needed to explain why Pizzini is walking into the lion's den, what she hopes to get out of the meeting, and the dangers she'll face if she fails. It all works together flawlessly. When Pizzini meets the broker, he presents her with a test to prove her trustworthiness to their operation. She has to kill a mule who failed his latest mission. Determined to root out the corrupt police and upend the trafficking ring, Pazzini pulls the trigger. However, the gun is empty, so she passed the test but didn't technically betray her ethics. Suddenly, a motorcycle rider crashes through the nearby window. The Witchblade leaps off the arm of the rider, cuts down the broker, and latches itself on Pazzini. The artifact engulfs her body in metal tendrils with lethal strength that lashes out and kills all the broker's men in a matter of seconds. One of the men shoots Pazzini in the chest before he dies, knocking her unconscious, but the artifact slowly pushes the bullet out. When Pazzini wakes up, she's unclear what happened, but she gathers herself enough to unlock the nearby storage unit, holding nearly a dozen girls meant for auction. We conclude the issue with first responders arriving to lend aid, and a dark figure watching the scene from a nearby rooftop. Overall, Marguerite Bennett delivers a tight, laser-focused, action-packed script that builds the world and characters in a thoroughly engaging way. The most we could criticize about this issue is the lack of a strong cliffhanger, but the curiosity for what comes next is high enough to want the next issue. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. If it was any other title, Giuseppe Cafaro's art would be considered very good to great. In isolation, Cafaro does a wonderful job with the look of the characters, the unique camera angles, visual pacing, and action. That said, which Blade fans won't be able to help compare Cafaro's work to the original creator's art, which in this case is Michael Turner, and it just doesn't reach the same level of detail and slickness. It's very good, it's not Michael Turner good. Longtime Witchblade fans who want clarification about where this series sits in continuity may or may not be happy with the answer. In effect, this series is a complete reboot that starts from scratch. Here you get a retelling and slightly modified version of Witchblade's origin story. Do the tweaks and adjustments create wildly different canon? No, not exactly. It's close enough that you probably won't even notice any significant differences, but overall it is starting over. Final thoughts. What do we think about Witchblade number one? 
It reboots Detective Sarah Bazzini's and the Witchblade's origin story from scratch with a tight, efficient, laser-focused, action-packed first issue. Longtime Witchblade fans will appreciate how masterfully Marguerite Bennett establishes the world and characters without wasting a single panel, and Gi- Giuseppe Cafaro's art is solid. That said, rebooting the series from square one may rub some existing fans the wrong way, and Cafaro's art doesn't quite live up to Michael Turner's legacy. Therefore, we're going to give Witchblade number one from Image Comics an 8.5 out of 10. Leave us a thumbs up if you are a Witchblade fan and are happy to see the series return. And leave a comment below with your expectations for this title. Where do you think it needs to go next to be successful? Also remember to click on the links in the description below to read the written review and buy this issue. So thank you very much for joining and please stay tuned through the outro for the next review.